What it do, what it do, what it do, what it do. Back at you with another one. So today I got to talk about what Iman Shumper said, right? I know y'all heard it. He said, if y'all didn't, LeBron James ruined the, the NBA by going to Miami. And I will have to say, I 100% agree. 100%, I agree with it. You know what I'm saying? Now, a lot of people try to, I'ma just go and kick the no, just go and knock the whole no help narrative out off the drip, off top, right? Because that's the number one thing you hear. He ain't had no help. He ain't had no help. Okay. He left after the 09 season, right? He left 09. Went 010, 2010, went to the went to the heat. The 2008-2009 Cavs had the best record in the NBA. 66 and 16. 66 and 16. Best record in the league. So, how do you have the best record in the league and don't have no help? That, that doesn't, that don't, that, what they say, that math, not mathing, that you had the best record in the NBA, but you didn't have no help. That's probably the biggest false narrative ever created in sports. This is what it was. This is what it really was. The real reason why he left or the help that he supposedly needed, right? He needed somebody to close. That's what it all came down to. It wasn't about help as far as like production throughout three and a half quarters. It was he needed somebody to win them last three minutes. That's why he go got, that's why he went and got with Wade, who was arguably the best, the second best closer in the league at the time. That's why he had to go with Kyrie, who was probably the best closer in the league at the time. You know what I'm saying? So the whole narrative of him not having no help, that's not what it was. He could not finish, he could not seal the deal at the end. Period. That's what it was. It had nothing to do with him not having enough help. I, how do you have the best record in the league, the best team in the league going into the playoffs, and you don't have help? How does that happen? How does that, that doesn't, that doesn't even make logical sense. It doesn't. So, so he go ahead and take his talents to South Beach, right? <clears throat> and part of the reason why that ruined the league was because it was no, the East was watered down, right? After that, because you got to remember, right? The two players that he teamed up with were previously on playoff teams, right? They were, they wasn't that good, but they made the playoffs, right? So now you take players from two playoff teams, put them all on one team. So then the next season, the two teams at the bottom that end up in the playoffs, really not playoff quality teams. They just there by default. They really not playoff teams for real. Now you got nine, 10 in the playoffs at seven, eight. You know what I'm saying? They really not supposed to be there. So these consecutive finals runs is probably the most overrated thing you could actually bring up because you spent the duration of your time beating up on teams when the third best player on your team was better than the best player on the teams you was playing. So the whole ease became wait for the finals because you knew he wasn't going, he wasn't going, you know what I'm saying? You knew they wasn't going to lose. Come on now. The best, and another thing about the super team thing that ruined the league was you never got head to heads with his actual error, right? Because they always try to like chop and move him around. Because if you really see his error, it's really the heat with Dwight Howard and Chris Paul. That's his error. Right? He plays so long that he they be trying to put him either with the Kobe. Era or they be trying to move him with Steph and Durant. No, your era was the White, Bosch, you, uh, 
Chris Paul, Wade, Melo. That's your era. And I only didn't put Melo in there originally because small forward, Brown was the best small forward of the era. You know what I'm saying? That was your era. You had no head to heads with none of them except the white, and you got whooped. You know what I'm saying? That's what you want to see, right? So, yeah, that whole no, no help, nonsense, nonsense. So, when the playoffs come around, it's like, dude, y'all whooping on who was you? Who you was playing? Isaiah Thomas. You played. I think the best the best competition you had was Paul George in the East with the Heat. The best competition you had was Paul George, right? And this is the thing we like to do with when you name who people play against. You don't take into account the stage of their career they was in, right? Because, yeah, you beat Durant in the finals. But you beat Durant in the finals the same way the Spurs beat you in the finals. You beat young Durant just like the Spurs beat young you. But don't nobody bring that up. They just say, oh, you beat Durant. You beat Durant harder than Westbrook. But you don't never mention the stage of their career they was in. Harden was a six man. He wasn't an MVP. He was an MVP, lead the league in scoring, James Harden. Okay. Westbrook was a young point guard. He wasn't Mr. Triple Double. Like, let's not ignore player progression. Because Hoopers know you can get better. You get better. You don't just, you drop, you come in the league and you just prime the day you walk in the league. That's not, that's not real. No. That's not even a thing. Like, no, it, it can happen on some phenom top, but no, it's player progression. You get better as you play if you work and you put time into your game. So, we never account for that when we talk about the competition that he played, right? Because even getting to the finals, the you, Paul George was your best competition. But the Paul George was like, Paul George in Indiana was similar to T-Mac in Orlando. We have him. We don't know what he got. We just going to throw young fella out there and see what we get. That's what it was. And he just happened to be good. <laughs> it wasn't like he was this established star that they played up against. He made his name playing against the Heat. He wasn't established yet. You know what I'm saying? He made, that's how he kind of made his name. He going up and he like, okay, what young fella got? Oh, okay, 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 okay. You know what I'm saying? So, so for how many years did the NBA was just wait for the finals? And the whole NBA was wait for the finals for almost a flirting at least half a decade it was just wait for the finals you know what i'm saying so it was it was it was tough to so you basically just had the west to watch if you want to watch competitive basketball it was just one conference you we just threw the whole other conference away and just watched the west because he he totally eliminated the competition in the east you know what I'm saying? So, but this is the part of it that, that where karma always come back to haunt you because you go to Miami, you win. They want to put you go conversation better than Mike, better than Kobe, even in that conversation, right? But as soon as another team do it, Golden State, oh, now it ain't fair. Oh, now you can't win no more. Hmm. So when it's fair, you can't win. But when you're the only one with the super team, you the GOAT. Make it make sense, right? That's like you a superhero as long as you ain't going against no super villains, right? You cool beating up on regular folk, you know, with no regular, with no superpowers. But as soon as there's a super villain, you, you ain't a superhero no more. You got to retire. Like, come on, man. That's, 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 no. So, luckily, the NBA didn't got parity again. You can watch games. They competitive. It didn't got back good. You know what I'm saying? It didn't got back good from a competition standpoint. So, that's my take on that one. Like, comment, subscribe. See you on the next one. Peace.